what we want to get our, to learn from you and, and start delving our feet in that and gaining the experience. And after I feel like we go through a few, a, a round one to me is like a cycle or two of booking a, a load um, over the road here, whether it's local or whatever, you, you, you can mentor us with that. And, and then one, once we feel like we've gotten our feet wet, share, uh, Lilith is in. Hey, Lily. There she is. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, I hit, hey. I hit record. I hit record too, by the way. Good evening. So, asset based. So, how many assets do you have as far as over the road? We have, and, we have, we have five reefers that we can also use as. Okay, um, hi guys. I'm here finally. Hello. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So you have you have five That's reefers. Fun. I appreciate it. You have five reefers you can use as dry vans. Right. What a chore. And then what else? That's it. We, we're starting out with five reefers. Okay, so that's what you'll leverage when you go to a shipper to try to get um, loads for those reefers. Because okay. right now you're doing uh, the, the uh, air, air freight and sea freight, right? Air, mm -hmm. and, air and sea, ocean mm -hmm. freight. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so the purpose of this training would be specifically for o OTR for the... Um, Reefer slash vans. Okay. That's right. That's correct. Okay. So, sorry to interrupt, guys. Can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. Hearing you okay. Know. I just switched off of um phone and I'm on okay. I'm on, on, on computer. Can't yes. can't see you, but we is this Sherry Ann? Yeah. Yes, it is. She okay. to let her face be seen. Okay, she's the shy type apparently. She don't want to no, show her face. Right. <laughs> That's right. right. She's she social distancing. Shy. There you, go, there you go. There you go. Social distance in Charles. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Well. Um. All right. Well. Good evening, ladies. So we're waiting on. We'll. We'll start with our. Um. I guess Willard. Willard. Uh, Willard. Willard. Yeah. Just yeah. go ahead, and then he can watch the tape. The tiny. Okay. Yeah. So. Well, finally. Uh, sorry for that glitch <laughs> in the I technology know. there. Wow. <laughs> all right. Well. Good evening, dispatcher. One oh. Uh, not dispatcher. Uh, freight broker. 101 training, well, not for beginners, for agility. Um, this Zoom training usually has, it's usually Tuesdays and Fridays. I'm probably going to reserve the Friday trainings for the more intermediate and advanced brokerages or, you know, people who are further along than the ones on the Tuesday who want just the beginners. So, but um, um, Sadani, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, perfectly, by the way. And um, and I were discussing, uh, well, we went over the website. It's a beautiful website. I'm kind of jealous. I'm going to shut mine down after tonight and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, re rebuild it. So who's the, um, who's the developer? Who's the developer on here? Sherry Sh Ann. Okay. 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 Let, let, let's uh, level set, okay? I was a developer. I don't develop anymore. Um, that's how <laughs> I... <laughs> Okay, that, good. I, I did many years ago, but in terms of the design, um, yeah, I did I put the design together to present for in motion to do the, you know, the, the build out and everything. Wonderful it job. Was, yeah. Wonderful job. Thank so, you. Thank you. Okay, so on the um, freight broker side, you guys are already established, so you, you don't really need the, the info on that, you understand all that. Did, did you guys receive the emails with all the information in it and the orientation password to get to orientation and then the other guest passcodes for the rest of the, of the links? Yes. yes. Okay. So you, you, have, you have free reign to the back office now. Okay. <laughs> to look at things. Now, remember, it's catered to beginners, but there's a lot of data in there that you guys can uh, definitely use. There's... Um, as far as what Sadani was mentioning, as far as getting the um, asset-based trucks, the five reefer slash dry vans connected to shippers so you guys can start that process. Uh, my first question, do you guys have a TMS system? Yes. Yes. Uh, you, ha you have the free version or the premium? Premium. You well, have we, have, we have the premium just until today. We're going to temporarily go to the basic and then get back on the premium um, later on. Okay. Um, okay. So that's cool. So you guys, you guys understand how to navigate that and think, oh, you're learning the navigation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I guess it's kind of straightforward, especially for the, uh, the techie people. You it just, is very straightforward, even for the non-techie people. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> um, load pilot is a good one. 
uh, Ascend is good, E-Freight Solutions, Algex, Access, these are different TMS systems. Transportation management software, basically a CRM and a CMS combination, database kind of where everything is centralized and you can manipulate it to bring in your low tender data from the shippers and then manipulate that to create the rate confirmations for the carriers. And minus your margins that you're going to charge. Have you guys decided what your margins are going to be as far as your brokerage on the, on the, um, on the OTR5 assets? And I'll give you an idea what that means. Um, if you do not know, like most brokerages will start like between 12 and 15%, maybe upwards of 20% if they get high volume freight from shippers. Um, so 15% is fair. So, so have you guys, what, what are you guys thinking on that, on those we, lines? We, we, we're between five and 20, depending on. That's, that's a, that's a huge range. Um, yeah. And I, and I can explain to you why. Okay. okay. Um, the bigger the, the, the load, uh, the propensity for a, a, a much bigger commission off of it. So okay. we'll, charge, we'll charge a lower percentage there. Okay, so you're thinking, so okay, for example, so proportion, you're thinking proportion and volume and stuff like that. Okay, correct. I, I got it, I got it, yeah, I follow, yep. yep. Okay, okay, so that's, okay. And that's gonna be a consistent thing going forward with that, with as far as your margins, a consistent theme going forward with that? Consistent theme, and then we have within that formula, our um, minimum broker fee is $125. So that's where we start. So it's a flat rate that must equate to the minimum of 125 within, within the percentage formula. Okay, and that per load? Correct. Okay. Um, you got drive-ins and reefers, so obviously your niche will be uh, refrigerated goods and general freight. Yes. So you are based in, um, you guys are based where, what's the main, what main state are you, are you going to use for your base? Florida. Florida. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you will target shippers starting in Florida, and then I would say what? Maybe the Panhandle, like Louisiana, Mississippi, um, Georgia, South Carolina, South Carolina, North Carolina. I mean, I'm and then also the Midwest. Target the Midwest. I mean, don't limit yourself to that area. I'm just saying, starting out, uh, but go from there. Yeah. Um, and then Target. Have you guys used or are starting to consider or starting to use any of the? Um, the resources to go after shippers like the McRae's Blue Book, the Thomas Net, the Webster's Online, the uh, what is the other one? Hunter IO. Okay, so you guys, you guys, so are you are you not? not, you're not that, that's why we're here. Today is okay. our first start with that. Okay, so uh, let's go to. So you have it, have you guys even logged into any of these back office things or? Yeah, I, I have. Um, yeah. As a matter of fact, I, I went to your shippers list to kind of see what was there and a um, couple other things I checked out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have that, that information. Did what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Well, your shippers list, I mean, my only thing is with the shippers list, the industry isn't um, on the, the spreadsheet. Okay. So, we we have you know we now have to figure out how we're gonna block things off right to figure out you know if it's if it's um what do you okay. call it you know produce or, or technology or whatever I mean that's right. not on there I think it would have been nice if that was there okay all right good point and that was that I'm assuming that was that either that um, Excel sheet or that PDF that you're referring to the Excel sheet the PDF all it had uh, was uh, company names okay. And there's a reason for that one, um, because I would have people take the company names and plug them into, um, I think it's Hunter IO or Thomas Net, and it comes up with email address, contact phone numbers, and the logistics person. There are, okay. in, um, let's go to tools, resources, and documents. And yep, that, that's where I went. Yep. Okay. And so you've been all through here. Right. Daily fuel. This is here to just help you guys as brokers 
when you are dealing with fuel surcharges with, with whatever state you're going to be working with. But we'll cover that later. That We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Right. Webster's Online is a online business directory for, you know, for finding shippers. Um, uh, what's another one? McGray's Blue Book. You haven't heard of McGray's Blue Book? Uh, I heard that it was in your seminar that I watched initially. Yeah. Okay, McGray's Blue Book, and I, I probably need to add that on the broker side. But here's a here's a look here's an overview of McGray's Blue Book, and I'm going to copy that. I'll put it. I'll add it to the um, back office after this training for the beginner broker students. But um, it's a pretty common one, and I made the mistake of assuming that you guys knew it, so I apologize for that. But um, but McGray's Blue Book, you can like. In the chat, you see that in the chat, you can cut, you know, uh, paste that in your browser and save it as a favorite or something. Later on, I'll, I'll add it to the back office so you can always access it. But um, you guys see it in the chat, the link. Yep. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Got it. See it. All right. All right. Um, so, McGray's Blue Book. You can look up either by product or service or by company name. You just select one or the other. So normally we're gonna say, so since we know what our equipment types that you guys have, you are an asset-based brokerage and you have vans and reefers. So typically general freight goes into vans, dry vans, right? And then refrigerated type of freight or commodities go into the reefers, like namely produce, beverages, things like that, meats, stuff like that, okay? Mm -hmm. So what you can do is you can type in like, either the product or the service or even the name of like, like if you had a flatbed, you can type in steel and it'll give you the manufacturers. You can type in produce, let's say produce, right? And see if it comes up with some information. So look at all the produce hits that it displays here, right? 27 it says, um, and then the different subtitles under agricultural produce, um, you can look up the different like fresh produce, broccoli. So then it gives the company profile. This one has 19 companies. This has 197 companies. So if you click that, it's going to open up. Here's one that has 535. That's just, that's off the music producer. So it just gave a vague one there, but, but you get the idea, right? You yes. type in the commodity. So, and then, so now you think, okay, well, in Florida, what's the popular produce down there? Like oranges, uh, apples, yes. oranges? Oranges. Okay. And and with produce too, this it's like a lot of seasonal stuff down there in Florida. Yes. So um, right. let's see, 197 bag, produce bags, agricultural, broccoli. So I'm going to select one here just to give you an idea when you open it up just to, for, for purposes of navigating i'm going to click bag produce bags and then you just go in now nah, i expanded it produce bag companies just just to because produce bags is like general freight so now you can either look at the companies here and then get their information open up their specific website or you can select your state produce bags company serving in the state of if you want to start off florida just mm. to get you can click on the one for Florida and it's six of them, right? Right. So we got some Florida here and then Winter Park, Jacksonville, Miami. I don't know what, where you guys are located in Florida, like the Northern Park, Central or Southern. We're, we're on the North side of the South, of the South part of the state. Okay, that wasn't confusing. No. <laughs> <laughs> Where's uh, Palm Beach? I got it. <laughs> I got you. Um, so it's it's actually West Palm Beach, but aren't they coming out of Winter Park, Sid? Aren't the, the trucks the, housed in Winter the Park? Truck, the trucks will be coming out of Winter Park. Mm -hmm. We got one directly in Winter Park. So we can do that, or we can do another thing too. We can, I mean, Google is always a good way to reference shippers because right now you guys are at a point where you're looking for shippers, right? And you're right. looking for shippers to try to find for your commodities, right? right? So you can say, um, 
Now, remember, too, there's a concept in transportation. It's called supply chain logistics. Have you ever heard that term before? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's, in higher, it's a hierarchy, right? So in that hierarchy, the top one is the raw materials, right? So you have raw materials. You have manufacturers. So people get the... So the raw materials get shipped to the manufacturers. The manufacturers make the products and they give them, they ship them to the distributors. Then the distributors ship them to the wholesalers. And then you have the retailers and then the end user. So raw materials, manufacturers, distributors, wholesalers, retailers, and then the end user. So as it relates to shipping and get you guys getting customers, we, you can, you can, the end users don't even count. They're just the customers going to the store and buying the stuff, right? But all the other ones, you have a potential to get a shipper from that category. So raw materials shippers can be like the farmers. Those are raw materials. They grow the products to ship to the manufacturers, right? Um, and then, so the point I'm making here is you can decide which of the supply chains that you want to target based off of your, the region of the country you live. What's more prevalent in Florida that relates to supply chain logistics? Are there a lot of manufacturers? Are there a lot of uh, raw material people? It won't be a lot of raw material. There's not a lot of farms down in Florida, right? You might be in the Midwest or somewhere out West. So you got to think of it along those lines. You take the supply chain hierarchy and you say, okay, for the state of Florida, there may be a lot of manufacturers, there may be a lot of distributors, and maybe a lot of wholesalers. Those middle three may qualify for our company to potentially go after shippers in those three categories. You guys yeah. follow, what you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, because I'm already thinking about the manufacturers, the distributors, and the wholesalers. Those right, three. exactly. So now you just, let's say, so let's go manufacturers. or manufacturing companies in Florida. Or let's say, we can say in Florida or in a specific region, in Winter Park. We'll say, let's start with Florida. Let's go broad, statewide. So okay. I'm gonna show you another resource too, and I may have to add this to there too, on, on one of the low boards. Um, it's called the DAT directory. Do you guys have a low board in your, for your brokerage? Not yet, Not but- yet. Um, we're, we're gonna, that's next. Yeah. Okay, you could either get truck stop, the, the broker level of truck stop, or DAT power, D-A-T. D-A-T stands for dial a truck. Get the version that's called power, which gives you the ability to post trucks, search for trucks, post loads, and search loads. Those are the, those are the four categories of a broker level low board login, all right? If you okay. get truck stop, uh, truck stop pro I believe but if it has the rate rate mate feature of included in the DAT, I mean not in the DAT, in the truck stop low board then that's the one to get because the reason why I say that rate mate when you call a shipper and they ask you to quote a lane in order for you to try to win that shipper say you get on the phone you get past the gatekeeper you're doing your cold calling to the shippers and you <clears throat> You cold call, you get past the gatekeeper by asking for the person in charge of logistics. And there's scripts for that or just conversations, right? I'm, I'm looking for, I'm with Agility Freight. We've been in business for 30 years. You give your spill, you're, you press the gatekeeper, get past them. Okay, yeah, let me connect you with them. Also to a caveat to that, when you talk to the gatekeeper, you would have already done your homework to find out the name of the person that you're trying to get to. Hey, I need to speak to Bill over in shipping as opposed to, can I speak to someone in charge of shipping? You don't, you, that's, that's a vague description, right? But if you've done your homework and you actually found out the name of that person in charge of shipping, right. and you say, let me speak to Steve over in shipping, it gives them the impression that you already know the guy, right? So then they're gonna be more likely to try to connect you to them, at least send you to their voicemail. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. That's just a, it's a basic strategy, but believe me, it works. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, um so what was i at um, so so i had said to you that uh i'm in we're in the middle with those three manufacturers yeah. and wholesalers 
Right. So I'm going to do a broad manufacturing company's Google search in Florida before I do a specific city so I can narrow it down. But let's see what turns up. Sorry, Charles, before you go on, you had said for Truck Stop Pro, it has to have the rate mate feature and you were going to explain why we needed that. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. See, I got selective amnesia. I apologize. Um, <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> um, so the rate mate tool is used. So when you call, uh, yeah, thank you. So when you call a shipper or uh, the gatekeeper and get past the gatekeeper and you finally talk to the shipper and you give them your pitch, you got about 30 seconds to 45 seconds to do that, by the way. And you convince them and they say, okay, um, can you quote a lane for me? This is what the shipper's gonna ask you. Can you quote a lane for me? What they mean is, and you gotta ask them, okay, what's the lane? A lane is something that's picking up in one city and state and delivering to another one way, right? So picking up in Winter Park, going to Atlanta, Georgia. That's one lane, right? So you ask them, okay, what's the, um, you already know the commodity, I mean, and you know the um, equipment type. You say, quote me a lane, Mr. Shipper or, or, or Bob or whatever your name is, right? And he'll say, um, uh, Miami, Florida to um, Greenville, South Carolina. He said, okay, all right, give me one second. And you'll, or give me, let me call you back in about five, you know, 15 minutes, five to 10 minutes. And you hang up with them. So now, or email them the, um, the lane, the quote of that lane. In either case, you're gonna go to the, truck stop load board and look in the rate mate tool for that lane, mm -hmm. look it up and get the spot market rate for mm -hmm. that lane. The average, what's, what's running for that, for that lane? What's the cost cents per mile for that lane? And then you add your margin to that and then you come back with a number, a competitive rate that you would charge or, or quote, I should say, to the shipper, right? Because you, you want to put your margins on top because you want to make money. Yes. So a, uh, you wouldn't be in this business if, if, if otherwise, right? So, but you get, the, you get the market rate, the going rate for that lane as a starting point to quote to the shipper. Now, sometimes it may be a hit or miss. You may miss, you may hit, but the experience is always great. So, but that's the idea behind having that rate make tool. And you can have it on that. Uh, that has it also, and that power, you just type in the lane and it, and it pops up with a spot market rate, either a cents per mile. If it, if it comes with a cents per mile and it doesn't have the, the, um, the, the, the overall price of the lane, like 2500 it just says $2.50 a mile, then the way to calculate the overall price is you take the cents per mile and you multiply it by the miles. Right. right? So if it's going 900 miles, but it, the, the, the um, spot market since per mile was 250, 250 times 900, whatever that is, that'll be your number. Let's look that up for a second. So Charles, question, when do you add the stops if there's one or two stops, as well as if there is, uh, if they have to drive to pick up the load? Right, so, and that's good. So let's go into a little bit further detail because that's, that's something I okay. overlooked. So when you're talking to the shipper mm -hmm. and, you convince them that, okay, I need you as a brokerage. Can you quote a lane for me? You, then you may have a checklist that you want to probably create and to ask them, um, okay, yeah, sure, I can quote a lane. Um, what's the lane? He'll say, well, let's go, let's go to that same thing, Miami to Greenville, South Carolina. Then you'll ask him, you'll go over your checklist, and you'll have it memorized, hopefully, or mentally. Or You're on the phone, so you may have a piece of paper in front of you. Um, how many stops is in there? How many stops is in there? How many pickups? How many deliveries? Um, and are there any special instructions with this lane that I need to know before I provide a, um, a quote to you? So that way, if it's a reefer load, generally reefer loads, you usually have multiple pickups and multiple drops. It's, I don't want to say it's rare, but um, about 50% of the time, it's reefer loads are um, what's called one and ones one pickup, one drop, right? Usually reefer loads are picking up in multiple places and delivering in multiple places. So now with that being said, if you get a shipper that has that type of scenario, then you got to add in extra monies for that. Um, and we'll cross that bridge when we get to, but let's say, let's say it does, let's say it has two pickups and two drops. Then you're going to, you got to consider your carrier getting there, having to wait at least two to three hours to get loaded. Um, 
uh, detention time, deadhead miles, things like that. So you want to add all that stuff into your quote when you come to the um, uh, shipper to return that quote to them. So you should have a checklist of every possible, you may not get every possible scenario from the shipper when they tell you to quote a lane for them, but you want to have a checklist that covers every possible scenario. So just in case something like that happens, then you'll have a rebuttal to respond to that shipper with when you um, either reply them back to them on a phone call or via email with your quote. Okay. So um, question, quick question for you. Would a broker be expected to know a lot of details about the commodity? And, and when, when I say that, meaning obviously when, you, when you, you're quoting a lane or you're talking to the you get past the gatekeeper and you, you're talking to that person, right? That the manager in charge of, of transportation, uh -huh. you're going to talk about, you know, your, your, your lanes, your, your rates, what have you. It, I mean, is there a requirement that the broker also knows a lot about the commodity? It's not a requirement, but it would be good for them to know it because now you're, you're impressing the shipper by giving them knowledge that you know what you're talking about and you understand You've done your homework on the company prior to even calling the shipper to try to win that tender from them. You know, you went to their website, you study what they deliver, what, what type of company it is. So when you do call them, you say, hey man, I understand you guys, are, um, you guys ship out onions or you ship out oranges. You know, is it seasonal or is it year round? You start a conversation with them. What's your volume? What's your capacity? We, I think we can meet your capacity. Um, you know, um, how many stops do you normally have in your lanes? Can I quote a lane for you? Uh, we, we're able to work. We're able to work together now, so it, it it gives an impression that you know. So based off of the training that you that you will receive prior to starting a brokerage, you'd be surprised how many new brokers come in that do not know uh, some of the basic uh, terminologies when they talk to a shipper. And oftentimes, shippers recognize that because they understand their industry. Yeah. So it'd be a good idea to learn the language of the industry especially dealing with shippers, because that's who you're mainly going to be dealing with uh, primarily. They are the ones who are sourcing the funds to you. And then the carriers secondarily, because those are the ones you're going after to contract with outside of the ones you have as your own assets. They are the ones that you're going to contract with to move those loads for the shippers. So if you understand the language of the shippers and understand the languages of the carriers, it makes it more, uh, it makes it better for you uh, in the end but you'll be surprised how many brokers coming in new. They'll just call a shipper. Hey, I'm a, I'm a broker, I'm ABC brokerage. I'm just trying to see if I can move some freight. Click, yep. hey, I'm ABC brokerage. I'm just trying to see if I can move some freight for you. Click. That's just, that's one of the most generic scripts um, a broker, a new broker can give a shipper because can you imagine if I'm a shipper, I hear this all the time. I'm working my, I got a multi-million dollar facility that I'm, that I'm trying to manage, moving freight in and inbound and outbound. That's another point I need to make too. Inbound and outbound. And I get calls all the time, emails all the time. I come in at 9 a.m. and I leave at 5 or maybe later if I got to, you know, depending on the time of day. And I get calls, I get emails, I get things thrown in my ear. So unless I hear something that's going to click and cause and pique my interest, I'm not going to want to hear it, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be in one ear and out the other. So can you imagine how many shipper, or how many brokers call shippers with some generic jargon that they turn away? Only when you say something to the shipper that, that, that resonates and they say, okay, yeah, you, you seem to know what you're talking about. Uh, you understand my company because you just explained it to me on this call. Um, so, you know, can, you, can, I, um, can I give you a lane to quote? You know, so. Um, also too, when you talk to shippers, Ask about inbound uh, moving, you know, in dealing with inbound as well as outbound. You mainly want to deal with outbound freight because you want to deal with shipping their stuff that they have at their facility outbound. But also ask them who do they receive their inbound things from, right? So if, if you're talking to a distributor shipping company, who do they receive their manufactured products from? Who, who ships that to them? So you get, that's another, that's what's called another lead for you. So now you're doing lead generation at the same time, trying to win a, a contract with a shipper. You see? Yep. Yep.
All right. So, um, so manufacturing companies in Florida. So it's a, um, So if you see the screen, that's a lot of manufacturing companies in, in the state of Florida. I could have narrowed it down to just uh, like Winter Park or what have you, but I don't know how far uh, Kissimmee and Winter Park, I got to open it up maybe and see, but, but that's there. So even if you land a shipper that's outside of the equipment type that you have as your asset, still try to get the shipper because you can just contract carriers. Like say, for example, you can't, you can't find reefer and dry van shippers, but you find a flatbed shipper and you win a tender from them. Okay, that's great. Just contract a flatbed carrier to move that load for that shipper, right? right. They're, they're not an asset of your company because you don't have a flatbed. So you have asset-based brokerages and you have contracted based brokers, where they contract with the carriers, they build a network of carriers to contract with. That's the whole point of the broker carrier agreement. So right. since you have assets, you don't, you have your own assets, you don't need a broker carrier agreement because they're within your company. But you're going to get to a point where the capacity of the shipper exceeds the assets that you have to meet that capacity, right? Because you only have five trucks. So even with your drive in and reefers, you're going to have to do contracted carriers because you're going to have a volume of loads coming from the shipper. Let's say that shipper moves out every day. Let's say you land a shipper that moves drive-in general freight or refrigerated freight every day. So they move 20 loads a month. You only got five trucks. So that obviously you're going to use up your trucks, obviously within your company. And then you're going to have to contract with other drive-in and reefers with a broker carrier agreement. Right. Follow what I'm saying? Yep. Okay. So in other words, don't do anything to squeeze our pockets. Make sure that we are open and flexible. So, so in that in that instance, then, um, whenever we are whenever we are over overcapacitated with loads outside of our five trucks, we're looking to contract with with trucks with carriers outside of that outside of our network. So this is when we would probably just access one of these load boards like that power and go post the load and yes. just put the requirements there that we need a flatbed um put what it's for blah blah yada yada put the lane where we're where, where you're picking up where you're delivering and um and then just put an initial um rate out there right so yeah you want to put as much details about that load as possible so when the carrier cause you there won't be any discrepancies now a lot of brokers leave a lot of stuff they post load ambiguous ambiguously i guess if that's a word there's a lot of ambiguity in the loads when they post it there's a lot of things left out so carriers will have to call or their dispatchers will call and try to get more details of the load prior to communicating with the carrier because maybe there's an appointed time maybe the load needs this maybe it needs that or whatever so communicate as much as you possibly can at the same time, still protecting the integrity of your um, your brokerage by not providing too much information. Okay. Put your let's say you get a let's say you win a um, a tender for five thousand dollars from a shipper. Right, every load that he gives you, let's say he gives you five loads a week. Each load is paying five thousand dollars, going from A to B. Right. Let's say you mark twenty percent off of that. Five twenty percent of five thousand is a thousand dollars. So you you post a load for four thousand. So that's your 20% margin. So obviously you want to, at the end of that load being delivered, you want to invoice the shipper for 5,000. They're going to pay you 5,000. You pay the carrier 4,000. You keep the change, right? Gotcha. Mm -hmm. That's usually how it works, high level. And then if you have a factory company, obviously they will pay you and then they'll go after the shipper for the money. Gotcha. You get it 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours. Now, most brokers, they'll even do this, and I don't want to talk negatively about brokers, but they have a, some of them are greedy. They'll take that five thousand dollar tender, mark their twenty percent off, and then they won't sell it for four thousand to the carrier. They'll say thirty five hundred because they want that five hundred dollar extra wiggle room to play with the carrier to try to pull extra money. Now that may work 
if the cents per mile is at market rate or above for that right. equipment type and things like that. So let's say it's a dry van and if 3,500 as opposed to that 4,000 is meeting that $2.50 or 225 a mile still, even at 3,500, then you win as a broker. You can sell it to the carrier for 35 and not instead, instead of making a thousand, you're making 1500. Right. You know, see, but Starting out as a brokerage, I do not recommend it. I would say give as much money to the carriers as you can, possibly, because you want to keep carriers, right? Yep. You don't want carriers dropping off loads and things like that, because things like that happen, and then the broker's held liable for that, because that's why that's the whole point of having a bond and insurance to cover certain things. So, um, so start be fair with the carriers starting out, and you'll keep those carriers, and you'll the most important thing is you want to impress the shippers. So if a broker is trying to squeeze as much money out of that tender on the carrier side and the carrier don't move the load and the load is sitting there, what do you think the shipper's thinking? Why is my load not moving? You're right. trying to squeeze as much money. You're trying to squeeze blood from a turnip. I need this load moved. I gave you a $5,000 load, which is well worth it, but you're trying to squeeze as much of it out of the carrier, which is an important uh, cog in the, in the, in the wheel. Mm -hmm. because the carrier is the one who's transporting the shipper's freight. You're just a middle person. You're the broker. Yep. You see, so, you know, you got to be mindful of that. Um, so any questions? So, um, and, and in the case that you just described, that scenario, basically the broker is going to commit to that shipper that rate because I mean the broker knows you can get a carrier for something less, right? If it, if we if we're going back to that five thousand dollar load, the broker already knows that the market rate is four thousand, right, for the carrier. So you can commit to the shipper at this point, or or do you yes, because wait to right? Because when you so in that conversation with the shipper, he asked you to quote a lane, and you pull that. You're gonna see that that amount is about five thousand dollars so when you go back to the broker you already have your margins cap so let's say you calculated your margins and you gave them that number after you did your rate mate of that lane and you saw that it was this amount let's say 4800 and you say i'm, well, I'm gonna add 200 to it to make per load right so i'm gonna say five thousand so you say you quote five thousand to the um shipper they say okay they send you an email with a load tender for $5,000. So you can either accept or reject that tender. Once you accept the tender, now you got to move the load, right? Once you accept the tender, you're bound to move the load. That's, that's the contract, right? It's legally binding. That's how that works. Mm. So, a question. Right. Using the same scenario. Uh -huh. So when they ask you to quote a lane, you quote the lane it is within the spot market average that that lane is $2 per mile. Okay. So you know that that's worth it for that $5,000. Right. Where is the special conditions? It's within that $5,000 or it's added on to that $5,000? It's, usually it's included. Everything is included and the shipper will let, let you know like in the email and you'll have a, like you said, you should, you should create as uh, the a checklist. Broker a mm -hmm. checklist and add every possible add all the possible scenarios you can think of mm -hmm. and then present that to the to the shipper and then they'll fill in the blanks for you they'll say well this is not this in an email you'll say okay we got general freight and refrigerated freight uh how many stops is it what are the special conditions of the stop are there appointed times or is it first come fcfs facilities that we're delivering to fcfs is a uh, first come first serve 24 hour shippers and receivers that's all that means. You just pull up to the gate. Whoever comes first gets gets seen first or gets offloaded or loaded first. That's all that means. Okay. Or do you have to set an appointment when you call them and your driver has to show up at the appointed time? Uh, what's the conditions? What's the detention time? What's the, any layover, any accessorial things like a, a deadhead? Like if they need a lumper. A lumper, mm -hmm. uh, like a lumpers is, uh, for those who don't know, um, at shippers and receiver facilities, the people who load and unload the trucks, on the forklifts, yep. they mm -hmm. charge for that service. It's called lumper. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Also, um, uh, what did I say? Detention. Uh, tonu. Uh, what would be your tonu 
Uh, Tonu is T-O-N-U. It's called truck ordered, not used. So let's say, for example, you got a tender for the shipper. Everything's good on the shipper side. You got a, either your, your asset carrier or your contractor carrier went to go pick the load up. Then the shipper calls you or the carriers, at least the carriers on their way to the shipper to pick the load up. Then the shipper calls you, the broker, say, hey, um, we canceled that load. That load's been canceled by our customer, the shipper's customer, Walmart, right? And for next week. So, so now you as a broker, you have to call that either the dispatcher or the carrier themselves and say, hey, man, uh, I'm sorry that load got canceled. So now the carrier is going to invoice you a tonu charge, truck order not used, to cover, and it's about, the minimum is $150. It goes up to about $250 to cover you know, them at least driving to the facility. And then they may even ask you, well, that load got canceled. Can you find me something else possibly? You know? Okay. And if you can't, that's fine, but at least you in, they invoiced you for the tonu, um, truck order not used. And as you guys move, progress along, since you're in this, enrolled in this um, training, as you progress along in your brokerage duties and you come across little scenarios, uh, you could always obviously give me a call and whatever, and then we can, you know, break it down for you. Um, so, first, so, so question along this, the same um, theme here. So the goal then is to make sure whenever we're quoting a rate to a shipper that we're quoting it as a flat rate, because it'll never, ever look good on us if we start out at one rate, forget to add something. So for example, we, we, we didn't include an accessorial right? A critical accessorial, right. like lift gate. Um, right. Or we needed lumpers and we forgot to add that in there, right? right. It, it'll never look good on us if we go back to the shipper and say, hey, I got to requote you that because X, Y, right. But that is not uncommon. It happens. Mistakes are made, especially for new brokerages starting out because you don't have the experience yet. Yeah. So, and shippers realize that, and this is a volatile industry, so it happens. Right. You, say, you go back to the shipper and say, uh, um, I, need, I need to renegotiate uh, this, 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 because we didn't realize that this was going to be included or this is going to be included, so we have to add this on top to cover that. And the shipper is going to either say yes or no. If they say no and you want to keep that shipper because of the frequency of the loads they're giving you, then you just eat that cost as a broker. Okay. You see? Yep. And, and you could eat the cost because as a broker, you just write it off as a cost of doing business anyway, tax write-off. Yep. Well, in, in, in the end. At, at year end or whatever you do your taxes, but and you learn about that and you don't make it as a mistake going forward. Correct. You learn. Yeah, experience is the best teacher. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, what else I going to say? Uh, oh yeah. Um, the because we you guys are mentioning cents per mile and and quoting the rates. So I'm going to look at it. I'm going to show you a tool. It's called that trend lines, and I'm not sure if you've heard of this before. Just before you get there, um, Charles. Yes. It, with that same, let's say two dollars per mile, if that is the going rate, you did say you want to keep your carriers. If there is room to give the carrier more than the going rate, is that recommended in order? To of course, because you want to keep okay. the most consistent and 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 honest and working carriers on your team. Okay. You know, because they are the most important uh, resource for you. Okay. The shippers, the shippers are your customers, but your resources, whether they're asset based or they're contracted, especially if they're, if they're asset based, you can control that because they're your carriers. They're company okay. drivers. They're company drivers in your trucks, right? Or owner operators who are leased mm -hmm. under your brokerage. But the contracted carriers, you want to keep them happy. You want to keep your company drivers happy too. Your contract, I mean, your um, asset carries happy, but the ones who are contracted, you want to keep them happy, you know, keep them happy. So if you can afford to give them as much as you possibly can as a business and still float your business, then because now you're thinking volume, right? You can pay your carriers the most and you keep a smaller percentage, but you're still floating your business, but you're getting a high volume of loads from the shipper. So you're bringing on more carriers. So it's more about low margins or you're in, but high volume. So you're going to make up that money as opposed to having your high margins and a low number of carriers. And they're barely moving the loads because there's a reason why they're low because you're not giving them as much money as you possibly can. So okay. you have to, you know, 
average that out. You have to leverage that in a way that's beneficial to the carrier to keep that carrier happy, keep them running, keep your customer happy. Your customer's happy, they're gonna give you more loads. They're gonna see that your, your brokerage is moving because don't get, it, don't get it twisted now. Shippers are dealing with more than one brokerage. They're not putting their eggs in one basket. They have other brokers they're dealing with. So if you can show them that your brokerage is um, providing the best customer service to them by your carriers moving those loads, they're gonna slowly transition those loads that they're giving to those other brokers to your brokerage mm -hmm. because okay. you are proving your worth more so than the other brokers. See how that works? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So here is that trend line. So we're on reefers and vans. So reefers, we're going to do the national rates for a reefer, okay, cents per mile. I'm going to click that. And it, it lists it in, well, let me hit reefer. That's flatbeds. So for a reefer, it lists it in um, zones, right? There's so many states. There's so many states that make up a zone, right? So here's the northeast zone with these states. Southeast zone, Florida's here. So two dollars and twenty nine cent a mile is the national average this week for reefers. So let's say you got a you got a shipper that wants to you to, uh, to quote a lane for them, and it's within that. Um, that zone, 229, uh, Florida to South Carolina somewhere. And it's like 700 something miles, right? So we can realistically give them a number now based off of this information, right? So we can say 229 a mile, I got my calculator open, 229 a mile, let's say it was 750 miles coming out of Florida, going somewhere st still within that zone. And so 229 times 750. That's 1,717.50. Right. So that is, that's a rate that the carrier um, is wanting to get paid minimum. So this is, this is what is the carrier is getting paid. So now for the broker to get their margins in there. So you want to add whatever your margins is. So let's say it's 20%, right? So 20%. And I'm going to round up. I'm going to say 1800 times 20%. Let's just say 360, right? So now you're going to say 360 plus the 1800. Always round up when you're dealing with transportation industry. 21. So I'm going to say 2500. I'm going to quote 2500 as a rate to the shipper for that, or maybe even 2300 to that um, to that shipper. So that way I can still I can still give the carrier 229 a mile and I can make a decent amount for, for the brokerage um, per load. You see what I did there? Yes. And right. you, you're using you using the rate based on where the delivery is being made, right? The end of the journey, more Correct. or less. Correct. Correct. So I assumed I said coming out of um somewhere in Florida, going to like South Carolina, that's still in this zone. So if I were to say coming out of Florida, let's say going to Ohio. Now it puts me in the Midwest zone, which is 307. So now the numbers change. You see what I'm, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. It, it always and you're right, um, Sherry Ann. It is where the where it, it ends the destination. Three oh so it's destination. But if, if this is within the same zone from origin to destination, then it's easy. It's, it's just going to be that number 229, right? Right. Makes sense. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So. So you but actually that's... answered, sorry, you actually answered a question I've been itching to ask you for a few minutes now. What's that? Like, it's like earlier in this training, you, you said whenever you are contacting shippers to gain their business for the first time and you're on the phone with them and they actually ask you to quote them a lane, you, you said, make sure that you're not going to outbid yourself. There you go. Right? So you just gave us an example of how not to outbid ourselves. There you go. So earlier you said 2,500, but then as soon as you said that, I was thinking, nah, I should, it should be at least 2,300 to remain competitive. And then you said it, you said 2,300. Right. 
So you're teaching us how to keep competitive. So it's okay right. to reduce our fees a little bit. Right. In just order to, to win under the radar. Right. And stay under the radar, win the bid, still give the carrier their fair amount, which is 229, which is at 17, 17, 17. Yeah. So, so you figure 17, 17, and you won that bid for 2300. Yeah. So 2300. Let's say, let's say even 1800. Let's round up for the carrier. 1800. So 2300 minus 1800. You still make five hundred dollars per load, right? And let's say you let's say that shipper gives you ten loads a week, so ten loads a week for one shipper at five hundred per load profit for you. That's five thousand a week for one shipper. Yeah. Let's say you got let's say you got five shippers doing that. Five thousand times five. That's twenty five thousand a week. Yeah. You see, you see how the numbers are adding up now. Clearly. Okay. But. Rome wasn't built in a day, right? It's going to, you have to build to that point. But right. knowing the process and the, and the basic um, overview and the steps to get to that point is, is very essential because now you will, you'll be able to leverage that knowledge and, and be able to approach any shipper and say, okay, yeah, okay, give me the lane. I'll go into my rate mate or, or whatever source I got to get a, um, a spot market rate or cents per mile. Or I can use this tool right here to see what the competitive rates are on average, and matter of fact, let me copy this and put it in your um, chat link here. And I need to add this to the um, back office too on the freight broker side. I've been doing it on the dispatcher side for so long. Um, so yeah, so this gives you an idea. So now that's reefer. So we go to a, let's say the shipper was a drive in. Quick oh, question. So, so what's, what's a good benchmark on turning around rates? for brokers i mean what 24 hours is that safe i know it's competitive but you know how quickly uh, as far as as far as getting back with the shipper I'd... yeah 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 to, to turn around and give the quote them a rate let's say they came to us they want a, a lane uh 15 20 minutes oh okay yeah because <laughs> if you want to do this sir yeah, if you're on the phone, if you're on the yeah. phone talking to them and you're saying, okay, and you impress them with the verbiage that you said, your your dialogue, and they say, okay, um, I'll give you a shot, Mr. Broker, uh, Agility Freight. Um, I need a I need a lane quote. I have a difficult lane. I need, I need freight move. It moves about 10 loads a week. Um, it's coming out of uh, Miami, Florida, going to um, Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, it's it's uh, and then you and then you start asking questions if. Once he stops talking, you say, well, can I ask you a few questions about it before I give you a quote? And that's when you go into your, um, your checklist just to get as much details about it. You'll say, um, can I hey, you Mr. introduce you to this gentleman right here? Okay, what's going on? Hey, what's up? How you doing? I'm good. He's, okay. he's our partner who will be giving us those five trucks. Okay, okay, cool, cool, welcome. Yep, so, <laughs> I'm saying okay. Maybe. So let's so so Miami, Florida, for a drive-in, and so I'm going to switch it over to the drive-in rates, right? So let's say you talk to the shipper. So now here's a drive-in. Mind you, this is color coded, right? So you see drive-ins now. So the numbers are a little bit lower, but they still well, it's higher. It was 226, now it's 230, but it's lower in the Midwest region. It's 269 instead of 307. But that's fine. I just wanted to give you an idea of what the averages are. Right. So going back to Sherry Ann's uh, question, uh, the shipper says, quote me, Elaine, you go over your checklist. Now you have to create your checklist, right, of everything that you want to potentially ask so you can have as much in your arsenal so you can provide the best quote and answer all your questions possibly, right? Yes. So in the conversation, you say, okay, uh, he's explaining um, Miami, Florida, to Greenville, South Carolina. It's, uh, it's general freight, it's drive-in. Uh, the commodities are whatever they are, drive freight commodities, right? Um, it goes in the drive-in. Um, it's first come, first serve. You're delivering, the, the, the carrier is gonna deliver to a 24-hour shipper. So that's FCFS, first come, first serve. Um, uh, lumper is included in the rate. You wanna make sure the lumper is included in the rate. We don't have to, we don't want the carriers having to pay for it. Um, and other things that, that you add when you ask those questions. So then, then you get off the phone and okay, well, let me give you a quote in about, can I call you back in about 15, 20 minutes? I'll have a quote for you. Click, you get off the phone, now you're doing your homework, right? 
You're doing all of this. So you put it in that lane, first of all, to get a spot market cents per mile rate, right? So let's say that spot market cents per mile rate was $2.30, for example, right? And you didn't have access to this, but you knew the lane and you knew the distance, the loaded miles of that. So let's say the loaded miles from Miami up to South Carolina was 750 miles. Let's go with that thing. So you would take $2.30 times 750 miles, that's 1725. Remember, that is what the carrier wants to get paid to meet that $2.30 average rate for that claim. Now you want to add your margins on top of it and come up with your profit on top of that to give that quote to the shipper. Now remember, 15 to it shouldn't take 15 to 20 minutes to do that, right? But no. So 1725. So now you say, okay, what's my percentage margin? 15%, 20%, 17%. Somebody give me a percent. 20% is 345. Okay, so 20% times the 17, so 20%, 345. So you say 345 So that's 20, 2070, right? So let's say you can either keep it at 2070, you can round up to 2100, maybe even probably push it, squeeze it to 22. Okay, so now you go back to the, you call the uh, shipper back and say, um, we can do it for 2150. Let's meet them halfway. We said 2100, then we said 22, right? So let's say 2150. And the shipper accepts that. Right? So now you won that. They're going to send you the tender. You accept the tender. Now you got, you know, you, you got a contract with the shipper to start moving the load. So 2150 is our number. What was the number that the broke that the carrier was going to get paid? 230 times 750 was what? 1725? 1725. Let's say, let's say the carrier said 1750 or even 1800, right? So if he said 1800, which is above that cents per mile, you're making the carrier happy. You still making money. So let's subtract 1800 from the 2150 that we won the tender for, you still making $350 per load for that profit on that load. Is that still good? Yep, still good. Yep. We ain't refusing nobody's money. <laughs> uh, question, Charles. At the point that you accept the tender, right, and you're going to post the load, if it happens that based on the carrier you now select, there is a deadhead. How do you account for that? Okay, so deadhead, carriers usually at minimum, at, at the maximum, they're willing to drive up to 100 miles deadhead to pick up a load. So your ship is in Miami and it's going to Greenville, South Carolina. Now, if you post a load and saying, okay, I got a load, a dry van load coming out of Miami, going to Greenville, South Carolina, and a carrier calls you that's within 50 miles, 75 miles, 100 miles deadhead, and they want that load, and they're able to pick it up. Um, that's no additional cost. It's no additional cost. Uh, the close, I would try to get carriers that are closer to that facility to pick that load up. The okay. further away, the more you're risking that carrier not making that pickup on time, unless you okay. add, unless you add um, covering, uh, you add a fuel surcharge um, for the carrier to cover, help cover the cost of fuel of them driving deadhead to pick that load up. Now, remember, if you do that, then you're eating that fuel surcharge cost, so it's taken out of your 350 profit. Okay. As a broker. Question so, on top of that. Understood. Qu question, on, question on top of that. When, when planning lanes, shouldn't we be looking out into the round trip future to say, hey, you just accepted a load from, from Miami to South, to South Carolina. Um, let's see if we can find you a load within 20 miles of where you drop this load off. I'm just using an example. You mean for the backhaul? Correct. Yeah, yes, for yes. the backhaul. Right. So if you're doing that then, so if you want to if you want to bid with a shipper, that's line haul. That's called line haul or head haul that's going one direction. Yep. If you want to set up backhaul for them, then 
you will, if you want to strategically target shippers that are in the place where that load delivered yes. to, set up, to set up backhauls coming back to that area, now you're setting up what's called a dedicated lane because now you got shippers. So you got a shipper coming out of Miami, going up to Greenville, South Carolina, and you got a shipper within like a 50 mile radius somewhere in Greenville, either coming back south or going somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So yeah, okay, you cool. you setting up, yeah, you can set up dedicated lanes or you might have that shipper in Miami shipping to that facility out of Miami or from that facility out of Miami going up to Greenville, South Carolina. And then their facility in Greenville may have a load coming back to the Miami facility. Okay. You may run into that possibility. If that's the case, then you're winning for real because now that's a true dedicated lane. Okay. Because you're dealing with the same shipper going up and back. Mm-hmm. All right. So, All right, you guys good? Good. So that's so that's the technique as far as um, when you want to do a quote, you want to add your um, margin, your percentage on top of what you you know uh, what you think is you know good for your company starting out. You know between twelve and fifteen percent, twenty percent, twenty percent is high now. Just mind you, um, but it's it's like a cap. I've seen some people do twenty five, which is crazy. But um, hey, it is what so we it is. can use this to find uh, the average rates for flatbeds as well. Any, yes, it's, it's any flat. type of equipment. Okay. Well, the three the three major equipment types: flatbeds, vans, and reefers. So okay. here is the flatbeds. Mm -hmm. Flatbeds is green, reefers is blue, like ice cold. Green flatbed for like nature and lawns and all that stuff. <laughs> And then vans is like amber or brown or whatever. So, but here's flatbeds. So, okay. So, so Charles, ju justify for me. Tell me why you think um, 25% can be crazy. Is crazy? Wouldn't it be crazy if it's a high ticket rate um, versus a very low ticket rate? Then you could get away with it depending on what it is, right? depending on what it is. But if you're charging a fourth of what the shipper's willing to pay you to move freight and the volume of that freight coming out of that shipper is not a lot, then the right. fourth, a fourth rate is too much. In my okay. Opinion. Right. In my opinion. Now you could do that if you want, but I, I can almost guarantee you, you're not going to win that tender. No, not that we will. I'm just, I'm just trying to make an argument for, um, you know, that, that, that formula that I mentioned to you when you asked earlier, what are we charging? Right. And you said that that was a very wide range. Right, five to twenty percent. Right. So, but you but you justified it by saying, um, it's proportional. Shipper, right. Yeah, it's proportional. Shipper with high volume charge this percentage. Shipper with low volume charge this right. percentage. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it so it balances out over time. Right. Yeah. I got it. Yep. Okay. So you guys. So I gotta matter of fact, I gotta remind myself. Add. Um, uh, trend lines and uh, I forget what else I got to add to this back office. What else was I supposed to add to my back office for the freight broker side? Trend lines and um, I think something Sherry Ann asked you like to see the categories by was it uh, by product, Sherry? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 McRae's Blue Book and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, McRae's Blue Book. Yeah. The resources. But I think that's back there. Let me double check. In the tools and resources, I think McRae's Blue Book is under customers or shippers. Uh, and then and then also too, um, um ba, 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 your your different packets. With brokers, there's two different packets, right? You got the broker shipper packet. So say you um, say the shipper says quota lane, and then also send me your send me your packet because the shipper still has to. They're gonna send. They're gonna you're gonna send them the packet. So once you once you send them a quote and they like the quote, they're gonna say send me a packet. So I, I missed a step and I apologize. You you send them the packet, they fill it out, and they're going to return that stuff to you, and then they're going to turn the um, return the um, load tender for you to accept or reject. Okay. So, the shipper packets contains, of course, you know your credentials, and then a credit 
application, either from your factoring company to run the credit on the shipper to make sure that they are factorable. Because not all shippers are factorable. They, you know, their, their uh, days to pay, their DTP is like net 30, net 45, net 60, net 30 days, 45 days, 60 days, right? So factoring companies don't want to wait that long to get paid. So they may not factor it because factoring companies are, are giving you the money within 24 hours and then they have to wait for the remainder of it, right? But they're charging you a percentage for that service. I think uh, Seven Oaks, I, I spoke to Monica, she said they do 2.5%, which is excellent for a yeah. factoring company. The range yeah. between... The range is between one and five percent, depending on if it's recourse or non-recourse. I don't know the details of what your relationship is with them, but um, and it's none of my business. I'm just saying recourse and non-recourse are two different forms of the factoring that they offer. They right. offer. I was on their website. They offer fuel cards and other services too. So, um, so yeah. Um, let's see. What was I reaching out to? Uh, so under this one, okay, you got to have a niche, niche, whatever. Sorry. Go ahead. All right, Charles, um, just to recap, you said that there are some shippers that are not favorable for factoring because why? Because of their days to pays is too long. They, they, it's beyond the standard. Yeah. So days, DTP, the days to pay, shippers, mm -hmm. don't, shippers do not use factory companies. Shippers, they pay you in a certain amount of days. They, they can care less about a factory company. They're gonna, they're right. gonna move their loads and they're gonna pay you after 30 days, after 45 days or 60 days. If it gets beyond that, then a factory company sees that, they'd be like, well, I'm not, why would I as a factory company pay my broker up front and I got to wait 90 days or 60 days to get paid from the, from the customer that I'm factoring from? But the so our guideline then is that nothing beyond 45 days they would factor? Is that it? Well, let, well, the, let the, the, no, 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 let the, go ahead, go ahead, Sadani. No, no, I was just going to say it, it's, a, it's a little bit more because the, um, the factoring company is also going to do that background check on the shipper right. as well. Correct. So that's, if all that's of the whole things, point. That's the whole yeah. point of the credit. That's the whole point of the credit application in the shipper broker packet. When you send it over to the shipper, they're going to fill it out, get it back to you. You're going to give that to the factory company. They're going to do the credit. They're going to check everything, DTP, yeah. all that stuff, and then they're going to let you know whether that shipper is factorable for you guys to factor it, so they can pay you guys on on time, like within 24 to 48 hours. And in fact, Mo Monica has su suggested to us that even before we approach a shipper, Correct. give her the name so she can do a quick check on them to determine if they're factorable or not. And right. she can let us know if we should bother going to be bothering with them or not. You know why? Because right. some factory companies have white lists and black lists of bad and good shippers. Yep. a database and they'll check it they'll cross reference it and they'll pretty much tell you okay uh i don't recommend this one or this one is fine so yes so yeah that's fine that's great uh let's see so we got this got this broker shipper agreement yep 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 okay so i'm in the wrong one but the wait, wait, let me see that boat again yep oh oh okay i thought it said something else we thought I said like Jamaica or something. Yeah. <laughs> you, I thought you so sound, too. You sound like a, you sound like an island girl too. I am an island girl. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I can say I, I I felt it. I'm like ah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so let's see. So the four R's. You guys are pretty much getting the four R's right now. You research, you know, getting your niche. You're researching the company. You're reaching out to the shippers. That's the second R, and then you're building the relationships by getting the, getting on the contract with the shippers and then you return business with the shippers by having your carriers deliver loads for them successfully so you get more and more businesses. So that's the four R's. But I, I wasn't looking there. I was looking somewhere else. Um, I needed to see. Oh, yeah, we were talking about packets just now. So, and I, I'm sure you guys have reviewed these um, areas. But the shipper packet the broker shipper packet and then the broker carrier packet are two different things, but those are the two packets as a broker that you're dealing with. You're getting your shippers on the contract and then you're getting your carriers who are non-assets under contracts, right? So you guys are, um, well, no, you're not 3PL, you're asset-based. So 3PL companies are brokerages who are contracting with 
carriers outside of being asset based. So, um, so here's the shipper packet. It contains your authority, your broker authority. You have a broker of property authority that you guys receive from FMCSA slash DOT already, right? Yes. It has a service date and it became active. It has your broker number, your MC number, and your and your all your information. You have a either a you have a bond now whether it's a surety bond eighty four or a trust fund eighty five. I'm assuming it's an eighty four BMC eighty four. It's an eighty four. Okay, so you have that. That's what you you submit that. So that's two. You have your W nine obviously with your your information, your EIN number associated with your business, right? Mm-hmm. And then you have. Um, I'm assuming you're going to get contingent cargo. We will. Because most shippers are now starting to require it. The purpose of contingent cargo is, let's say you have a contracted carrier that has $100,000 cargo, but the freight on there um, exceeds the value of their insurance. So your contingent cargo insurance kicks in to help makes up the difference. That's the purpose of, that's why it's called contingent cargo. Contingent upon whether your carrier's cargo insurance can cover the insurance cost of that freight loaded on that trailer. And the range is like 100,000 to 250,000. Uh, I would start with 100,000. Generally, that's enough, the minimum, because your carriers are gonna have, your contracted carriers, not the ones that are asset-based because they're under your brokerage, but your contracted carriers usually have $100,000 cargo, okay? Mm -hmm. And then the credit application that I mentioned earlier that's gonna be sent along with, so that's your, Broker shipper packet. That's it. Those documents. That's the bare minimum that you need to send. Most brokerage brokerages have other fluffy information like their bios, the name of their kids, their birthdays, all this other crap, right? <laughs> Just send the sh shippers the bare minimum. Shippers don't have time to read all the other stuff. They need everything they need to see your credentials, the credit application. They're going to fill that out and shoot it right back to you with the, um, the load tender. So, and then you wait to accept or reject the low tender based off of the response you're going to get from the factoring company about the credit application, right? Don't sign that tender accepting it until you hear from your factoring company whether or not the shipper is factorable or not. Okay. Right? Yeah, don't put the cart before the horse, right? Right. Okay. Is there an independent check that we should do to verify the shipper's credit worthiness outside of the factoring company? No, it shouldn't be. I will let the factory company do. That's why you're paying them. Just let them do their job. Okay. They are okay. ex they are experts at that. That's what they do. Because what if we have a load that we don't want to factor? Then you offer your payment options because brokerages have payment options too. Okay. So they have what's called quick pay, ACH mm -hmm. transfer, and paper checks that you send to the carrier's residence. And and that. Not only that, I think um, if, if I recall correctly, we may have the ability to check, like once we set up an account with the factoring company, we may have the ability to check ourselves. Yes. Um, so that check is a shipper, a shipper's yeah. background, meaning so we don't want it to be factored, but we just want to check their background. So right. we may be able to do that, Lalita, um, okay. ourselves. Yeah, that is a true statement. Yeah, you can go into like, um, there are certain websites you can check. Like you can go into the Safer website. I think that you can check shippers as well as brokers and freight forwarders and carriers. Yep, you can go I'm to the FMC, fmcsa.dot.dot.gov website and check um, a shipper as well as um, brokers and carriers and freight forwarders. So this is a common website for lookups, company lookups, right? So you can put hours in there and you'll see it. Yeah. So you, if you put agility. I don't remember your, so if you got three ways to do it, DOT, MC, or the name of the company. Yep. So if you know the name of the shipper, you, I'm not sure if they do shippers. I got to, um, so you guys are Lake Worth, Florida. Yep. So this is you guys right here. Yep. And there you go. You guys are an authorized for property broker. There's only two types of brokers, broker of property and broker of household goods. You guys are broker of property, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. And there's your information. So, um, and then of course, your MC and your DOT information, you guys, June 25th. Yep. That's the date. And then authorized for hire. Everything that has the X by it applies to you. General freight, intermodal containers, refrigerated beverages, paper products, agricultural. So you do all these things, fresh produce, 
machine, machinery, and large objects. So you guys are dealing with flatbeds too, eventually. Yep. Building materials, motor, motor vehicles. You guys are gonna haul cars eventually. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna get central dispatch and do car hauling with the yes. motor, with the, with the um, uh, yeah. dealerships, the used car dealerships. Yes. yes. Okay. There you go. So there's your information, and you. Go down here, and then you scroll up here to the top and go over. Have you guys been to this hype site before, Safer? Yeah. Well, I'm not sure if Lilith and, uh, but I, I I did the application here, so I have access to this site. I mean, we oh. all three of us can have it. So you got F SMS. You can look up your licensing and insurance information. You click that link. Checking yep. out, checking out a robot, uh, and then the search, and it just gives your DLT information. You can look at it as an HTML or report. Mm -hmm. Click it and it opens up more details about it. So you guys are, you're not a common, you don't, your authority is not a common, it's not contract. You have an active broker authority, right? And then your BIPD, you don't have anything yet. BIPD is the, the um, liability insurance. It stands for bodily injury, physical damage. That's what BIPD stands for. That's the type of liability, usually a million dollars. Um, I recommend, there's three types of insurance brokerages usually consider having a uh, liability, a million, contingent cargo between 100,000 and 250, and then one called errors and omissions insurance. I don't know, I don't, the, the value escapes me right, right, right now, but the purpose of errors and omissions for the broker side, it protects you guys in case of errors and omissions, you make mistakes on something. So say for example, you get a flatbed uh, shipper and you get a load and you neglect to tell the carrier that that load needed to be tarped, right? They pick the load up without tarping it. They leave the shipper facility and get to the receiver. The receiver refuses it because they knew it was supposed to be tarped. So the freight on there, like if it was like steel and it rained, it might have oxidized and rusted. So they, re they rejected it. So now you have to cover that so your errors and omissions insurance kicks in and covers that because because the receiver rejected that load so that's the point of errors and omissions in case you make a mistake as a broker so you have insurance to cover that it doesn't really come out of your pocket per se but it you know and it doesn't even raise your premium because this is the type of insurance for that for those possibilities you, you know the possibility of you making mistakes so mm -hmm. it protects you even when you make mistakes, right? Okay. So it's called errors and omissions. All right. So what you guys, was it? What was it? BIPD. Uh, bodily injury and physical damage. Thanks. All right. A lot of information for you guys tonight. Yes, but good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so um, so we got okay, I need to put trend lines. I got that. I need to put in the back office. I need to put under uh, resources. I'm going to put this all on the tools and resources for not only you guys, but the beginner. Because some beginners could have been on this call too and just, just listened in but got asked, asked some beginner level questions. And you guys could have helped answer them because you guys already been past the point of starting the brokerage, what the requirements are as far as applying for it and, and um, BLC3 and bond and uh, UCR and, and filling out the OP1 either online or paper format or whatever. So you guys, you guys did yours online, I'm, I'm assuming, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So you went to the, um, uh, the website, the website, fmcsa.dot.gov and then yep. new applicant, check the box and blah, blah, blah. Correct. Okay. You know, did you only have to do it one time? Because some people, they make mistakes and they got to repay that $300. You got it right the first time? I got it right the first time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, that could get expensive now. Hold on. They, they call me bullseye for a reason, okay? I don't like, <laughs> I, I don't like to be doing too much work. So do yeah, it right yeah. first time. Great, great, great. Sorry, Charles, you had yes. mentioned that there are three types three other ways that the shippers would pay? I know you said paper checks. What was the other? Oh, the three other ways the broker pays. The oh. broker, so if a carrier does not have a factory company, to, the carrier has factory companies too. So if the carrier doesn't have a factory company to pay them in advance from a load that they delivered, brokers offer three payment options. 
outside of the factory company that the carrier would have to, to pay them. Quick pay, and you guys can offer, because every brokered load usually is a factored load, so you can offer quick pay to your contracted carriers as a way to pay them quickly the same way that your factory company is going to pay you from your shipper quickly. You pass that expense to your carriers in the form of quick pay. Mm -hmm. so you, and so and then you charge up to 5% for that service. So that'll help you cover your expense of paying the factory company or, or at least a, a, a portion of it. So that's what brokers do. They pass the expense of their have them having a factory company to get paid to the carrier in the form of offering them quick pay if they don't have a factory company themselves. Right. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Okay. And most brokers would kill me for saying that, but that's exactly what they do. So, <laughs> um, and then the second way is a um, a wire transfer. It's called ACH, automated okay. clearing, automated clearinghouse. Okay. What, what, what in the carrier packet, and I'm going to go back to that in the packet section, because we did the shipper packet. Now we're going to do the carrier packet. But in the carrier packet between the broker and the carrier, um, if the carrier, if you offer those three payment options and one of them is ACH, then you require the carrier to either send you a voided check or put in the somewhere in the carrier packet on the line their account number and routing number so you can wire that money to their account. And that's five to seven days. Okay. Quick pay is one to two days, 24 to 48 hours. ACH transfer is a wire transfer. ACH, they call it the same thing. Five to seven days. And then the paper check you just mail to their residence. You can do net 15, net 30, net 45. So if I'm a carrier and I don't have a factory company, you offer one those three options. Obviously, I'm going to take the um, I'll take the five, the three to five percent hit and get quick pay because I want my money just as fast as you want your money from the shipper. Yeah, right? we have we have these three very three terms in in our template packet right now. Okay, good, good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the so we went over the shipper packet, the carrier packet, of course that you send to the carriers to get contracted with you guys as network in your brokerage, not your assets, but the ones that outside of your network to get contracted with you. Of course, your broker carrier agreement, you know, the verbiage of that, blah, 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 right? Legalese. Mm -hmm. I just did a one, the first page and the last page with the signatures and stuff, right? Right. The brokers, usually, you guys usually already have your stuff pre-signed and your information, and then the carrier just fills theirs out. Carrier profile, because you want to know their information, so you can vet them out, right? Before you onboard them, you want to vet them out, right? Check their CSA scores, driving records, things like that. Because you don't want bad carriers because that leaves a bad taste in the shipper's mouth in case they're late on deliveries, things like that, right? Yeah. So you're protecting your, uh, your assets. So you're protecting your investment, I would say, with the shippers. So the carrier profiles give the details of the carriers, their SCAT code, st standard carrier code, that's what that is, standard carrier uh, access code or whatever. Their ID number, which is their EIN on the W-9, their MC number, all their information, what they operate, who their dispatcher is if they have one, operations manager, dispatchers, one and the same thing. Um, if they have a factory company, they'll, they'll list it there. And they, they'll even send you to um, an NOA form to fill out. So carriers, factory companies do the same thing that you guys, your factory company does with the shipper. They run a credit check on you to make sure that you, there's no red flags against you, the broker. So that's the purpose of the NOA, which is the notice of assignment. So if a carrier has a factory company and you're trying to onboard them, they're going to send you a notice of assignment to fill out, to get back to them so they can give to their factory company to run a check on you. Okay, just be ready for that. But if you're doing everything you're supposed to do, you're not, you don't have anything to worry about. Right? Yeah. All right. Yep. So the, okay, so the broker carrier agreement, the profile, this is the broker carrier agreement, right? The packet. The, the carrier's authority, you want to make sure that they are authorized to move freight as dictated by the FMCSA and DOT. And then their insurance, their certificate of insurance, you want to make sure that they meet the 
your minimum requirements for your brokerage. And the standard is 100,000 cargo and uh, a million dollar liability. And the W-9, right? And then here's, a, here's a, an example of an NOA form. So that's the bare minimum of the packet. And this is back here for you guys to review. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. But it explains it. I got arrows pointing to everything. And so, but um, it kind of breaks it down, right? In layman's terms. And these are downloadable, right? These are not downloadable, but the, uh, I can, I, I thought I had some in tools resources. If not, um, I can add those to, uh, to that. Okay. Have you guys created your, um, your, your packets on either side yet? I'm in the process of doing that right now. Okay. Okay, cool. So you so this will give you like a kind of a template to, to go by of what to ex, of what to um, consider. Yes, Our, sorry. Um, I don't understand. Sorry, it's my Google Assistant. Okay. Um, question. Okay. Um, is is it possible that we can start do, doing loads without having? the BIPD and the contingent cargo insurance and the errors and emissions yet? You can do it without the errors and emissions. It, you're taking a risk, but if only if you get a shipper that doesn't require um, contingent cargo. Most shippers do now. So yeah. if you're fortunate enough to find a shipper that doesn't require contingent cargo, because they're going to ask because they want to see how much skin in the game you guys have as brokers. Yep. Okay. That's one reason. That's one reason why they're requiring it. It used to be a, it used to be optional, but now it's starting to become standard as a requirement. So I noticed on your as you were scrolling down, and I was looking at the uh, keep going that one right there. Okay. Logistics IQ Insurance Solutions is that somebody who we could call to get quotes for any one of these three? I, I threw them in as an example. I didn't really do as much research as I needed to. Um, I would say um, start with the high level ones like progressive. Okay, got you. And then uh, work your way down because they'll progressive will set a pretty good standard for you. And then if they don't meet your, your numbers as far as what your budget is, then you can um, shop around. Okay. Okay. All right. Are we, we good? We're good. Yep, we're good. Now, you did say you're recording this, and it will be available to us? Yes, in the, in the, it will be available to you and whoever has access to. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, in the back office here, under training videos, the very last link down here, training videos. I haven't put one back here on the broker side. This will be the first one in a long time but under training videos. And so we got the month of August, March. They're in months, so, um, and I started recording a couple of years ago on the broker side back in March. So that's why you see March starting off. But um, there's, so you haven't been back here in the training videos section? Not yet. No, not oh, yet. Oh, oh my God, you guys will have fun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, these are training videos and they're like, Multiple uh, for each month, there's like multiple ones. You might click some in there and you'll have an arrow that points to more. Um, but let's go down. So, this is what December. So, I got to add some in here for so July. I don't have any for September. So, these are space fillers because I have I didn't do a lot of broker video trainings in July, August, September, but I got some for October. So, so I have to add November. Oh, here's November a space filler, and then December should be a space filler. Okay, so I'm going to put December in here for 2020. So it'll be there. Okay. For the month. Perfect. Of and then, of course, January and February. So I haven't done recordings for freight brokering since, I guess, October of, yeah, the last one was October 22nd. What now, when do you think? Oh, sorry, ahead. sorry. No, I was just gonna, so when do when will it be um, up on the site? When oh, will the tonight, tonight. Once I get done here, I usually edit and then uh, upload it and put it in. And I'll, I'll actually, um, I'll email 
uh, sit down and you say uh, it's it's available. Okay. Well, I might say, I might just email all of you guys and say the video is available, and even maybe may even send you a link, so you just go directly to it and you just sign and just log in to it from the link. So. Very okay. good. That works. Thank you very much. And, and very informative. And yeah. next next training is Tuesday, right? Yeah, it's Tuesday for the beginning, but you can come in um, Tuesday. You guys are pretty much, I mean, you guys are like there, honestly, but you just, <laughs> you just need, you just need to, I guess, tweak some things, which I, and I, and I sense that I can feel it. So, but use these resources. And if you have questions, they're basic level resources, but it's nothing wrong with tightening up your, um, your brokerage with understanding okay. these things. So then if you feel like we're there and then we just need to tweak a few things, uh, I heard you say that you offer um, the intermediate uh, course as well. So is that something we should just segue into with you? Well, to be quite honest, tonight's training is the intermediate <laughs> course. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, because I didn't go any into any of the basic stuff. Gotcha. But it's basically what we what we do is basically conversate and go over strategies for in as far as intermediate stuff, and then we just do examples like we were doing tonight. Because okay. if I was if I was to do tonight on Tuesday with the basic, they'll be like, "What do you? What do you, I don't know? What, what does this mean? Or what does that mean? I don't understand." And you know, okay. they would have been gone. They would have been lost, right? So I would have had to go back and say, "Okay, this is a broker. This is an agent. This is what the broker uh -huh. does." You okay. know what I'm saying? So right. Yep. Gotcha. So, yeah. so really quick, show us where you have examples of your um, of your calling scripts because I'm I'm putting together some calling scripts right now. And you did mention that we don't want to use a generic approach once we get past the gatekeeper. So yeah, calling scripts are just a guide. Right, you so you want to have personality and flair to it. Yeah, you want to have like an understanding and a knowledge of the of the company prior to calling. Company, it. understood. Mm -hmm. You want to know the name of. Um, so here's one right here. Here's an example dealing with shippers. Here's cold calling gatekeeper information. Go gatekeeper script shipper script, and it's just an example. You can take that and tweak it. Perfect. Right there under um, under dealing with shippers. Excellent. I remember in your seminar, um, in the young lady you were speaking to, you um, went through the example that, you know, that if they said, okay, we don't have any loads right now, but you could give us a callback or whatever, that we either call back or email and you can say, okay, you may not have any loads right now, but what are your pain points? What can I help you move? Exactly. You know, so, so even um, if they shoot you down there, you can, you can create a warm lead. I say, okay, uh, well, I know you don't need a brokerage now, but um, can I leave in my email information, contact information? Can I contact you within uh, 90 days or when can I contact you next to see if you do have anything that you may need uh, or what are your pain points and, and see if I can meet that capacity. And yeah. they'll say, okay, yeah, I had nothing now, but yeah, check back with me in about six months or 90 days. When they, when shippers tell brokers that or brokers who are looking to get them on, they usually assume that they're never going to contact them. But if they see that someone did contact them, they say, okay, this person really wants to work with me, you know, or you may get, okay, well, he's just <laughs> another answer too. But in most cases, they'll say this person really wants to work with me and then I'll go from there. But yeah, you, and and then and then honor that, right? Follow up, put it in your calendar or a reminder somewhere. Even though six months is a long time, you'd be surprised how quick it comes because you're busy going after other shippers and doing other things six months ago like that. So you use the last use the last R in the four R's. Return. Yeah, return on basically getting so re the last R. Yeah, return, but that one means that you get return business from the shipper by providing that, that initial customer service, they're going to give you more loads. Yep. Yeah. But I was just saying, take that concept and follow back up with the person you initially called. Yes. On a, on an initial cold call. Yes, exactly. Exactly. You got it. So I got to remind myself, okay, put trend lines in there, put safer in there. Um, on the site and okay, I'll show you your 
Yeah. You said something about McGray's blue book at the beginning book. that you have to add that to the um, back office. I thought I had it in there. I could have sworn I had it in there under approved care. Okay, so approved carriers, packets, booking loads, workflow, TMS. We got the TMS systems in there, workflow, booking loads, working with ship customers. You don't have a you don't have a global search, Charles, on your on your website? I, I know, right? I'm 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 not a tech, I'm no longer I'm no longer a techie. I'm no longer a techie. <laughs> So shots fired, shots fired. I, I get it. She threw some shade. Broker shipper agreement. Okay, so I believe it's under workflow, but that's cool. Hello, hello, hello. This is Charles uh -oh. with Exodus Dispatching and Train. There we go. I opened that video up by mistake. <laughs> um, da -da -da, shipper packets, approved carriers, booking loads. I just want to look at an overview real quick, just to get an idea. Oh. I almost forgot my own passwords. Um, okay, posted loads. So okay, a load tenders to Raycon, so that shows you what it looks like. Okay, so I'm sure you guys had a chance to look at these, just to get an idea of what they look like. Invoicing shippers from deliveries, okay. So it gives you an idea. So when you start to um, when you start to deal with invoicing and going and and um, what is that one? What is that one? Uh, oh, I hit the wrong one. That's why. There we go. Someone was asking a question? Yes. Um, Sid was asking if they were downloadable and you said no, but you could and you didn't finish the sentence. Yes, I'm going to. So what was you were asking for that you needed to be downloadable? If all of those forms, like the shipper um, broker uh, agreement, all of, everything that was included in, on your packet page, Okay, right here. Okay, so you want the BMC? No, like no, the like the sample agreement, not those. The broker uh, carrier yes, shipper. That one. shipper. The broker carrier, yeah, broker the carrier, carrier agreement. Broker carrier agreement. Because the shipper packet is just contains your credentials and the credit application. So that's your credentials. You already have your own W-9. You already have all your other stuff. Right. That sent to so, but on the broker carry agreement, you need to, uh, to see a blank. Yeah, we, we need a template of a broker carrier shipper. and a broker shipper. Well, there is the broker shipper agreement. This is the bare minimum. The, okay. the pack, so when they say broker shipper agreement, it's just the packet that you're going to send to the shipper with your credentials and the credit application. That's the bare minimum. Now, yeah, you, but, but but within the packet, there's the actual agreement. agreement. Right, right. So you want to you want to you want to download a bit of that. Okay. Correct. Got it. Yeah. As well, just so for the shipper and the carrier, because I yeah. already have one for the carrier. Just want to compare it. Okay. Understood. All right. And blah, 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 blah. Okay. Got it. Now, tools and resources. I think this under tools and resources. Okay, I got Webster's Online. I, I, I thought I had McGray's Blue Book in here, but Webster's Online is also a, a online resource. If I click that, it should open up to another tab, and it does. Okay, this is Webster's Online. So the same thing that McGray's Blue Book did with the products and services, looking up by company name, you can search for there. You can play with that. You got a lot of links right here for manufacturers, agricultural, forestry. You can look up based off of SIC codes. You can look up by um, NAICS codes, different. Nice. Okay. Company name, you put the company name in there, the product tab, you hit the products. 
the state, you can just search for the state of Florida for products, company names, let's say products, hit search for the state of Florida and in the product name. So let's say produce. It may want a specific name, but we'll see. Produce. So I know there's more than two produce companies in Florida, but um, and then there's the zip code, the company profile, email address, websites, things like that. Um, company names, zip code. You can look up by the zip codes. So that's a that's a resource similar to McGray's Blue Book. I'll add McGray's Blue Book in that in this location under the tools, resources, and documents. And then we got top five man, top 500 manufacturing companies, that PDF. So as of 2017, so some, I'm assuming some of these companies are still existing, Apple, of course. So 13 pages, 500 companies, and their categories, the types they are, the industry that they're in, okay? okay. So that's a resource. How do I get shippers? PDF, so scripts and stuff like that, or just you know, they're they're giving you the generic way, like looking at products in your house, in the backup mm -hmm. on the manufacturers and calling them, doing research on them, using directories. Like here go some directories you can use to get shippers, carriers and food, Manta, Blue Book stuff. So these are other resources to look for shippers. Thomas Net, remember I mentioned that? Yeah. yeah. So okay. And 10 ways to do cold call, 10x, just some information about that. 10 rules for creating cold calls that generate leads. You can, 13 page, you can read through that as a, as a resource. Mm -hmm. uh, how to find freight like the pros, freight broker software, freight broker insurance, uh, contingent cargo. It just, gives, it just gives what they are, the definitions of it. Okay. Uh, remember errors and omissions, ENO, contingent cargo, general liability. So it's a plethora of resources back here, right? To start with, um, top 10 low boards or top 12 low boards, I should say, on the broker side. Compliance for broker operations. This is by, um, this is the actual literal. FMCSA standards, the 49 code, CFRs, Code of Federal Regulations, Section 371, Title 49 for the transportation industry, the actual code itself for freight broker compliance. Is that the most current one? This is, I want to say no, but okay. I can look it up and see. Uh, what else? Top 12 low boards as it relates to brokers. And you just go through that. You got from 12 down to one. One, two, three, low board. I have that. Trucker's Path, I have that. Uh, I'm surprised that is not in here, but this is more broker. What they mean by broker level low boards, they're probably talking about with the TMS inclusive in it. That's probably why it's not listed there. Uh -huh. Um. And then, of course, we got a 2020 shippers list. This is what um, someone was referring to when we first started. Um, that spreadsheet needs to be. Someone sent me that, so I, they, they got it from a, a resource. They just shared it with me. So I said, well, let me just throw it on the broker side and see. Cause yeah, because uh, when I looked at it, I, I, went, I didn't find anything that represented their industry or commodity or you know anything to that aspect. Right, so it, um, I probably would have to um, edit that spreadsheet and add a column or, a, or rows in there to dictate, to um, emphasize that. Um, what else, what else? That's it, I need to work on. I got some homework assignment, apparently. <laughs> I always hated homework. <laughs> the, the DAT trend lines is in your back office? It's in my back office on the dispatching side, but I will add that to the broker side under also under tools and resources. So everything I'm adding, okay. like trend lines, McGray's Blue Book, and the Safer website, I will add that on the tools and resources. No TMS. 
No, no, not on the TMS. On the TMS is the transportation management system. It just talks about the different ones and gives them mm -hmm. an overview. So here, top 10 freight broker TMS software. We got, you guys got to send. And uh, we got Algex, um, E Freight Solutions, Algex, Axis. I didn't put Low Pilot in here, but Low Pilot is one of them. Matter of fact, let me see if that's on the list here. Okay. So the freight broker software top 10, low pilot is number one, and there's links for it. Strategy systems, Algex, Truck Stop. Remember I mentioned Truck Stop? Uh, our client, DAT Power with the TMS feature, 3PL system, which is brokerware. So there's some popular ones, Tailwinds, Power Broker. That's for LTL though. You're not, you probably don't want to start with the LTLs, the less than truck loads. So scratch that one. You want to do full truck loads, so you increase your profit margins. Um, but yeah, so I recommend one, four, six, and nine. Okay. Okay, doc. All right, ladies. Okay. Well, thanks again. And and if you have any questions, we can just email you or or call. Correct. Yes. Yep. Okay. And then uh, we can do this every Friday. If you want to come in on the basic one, you're more than welcome to. Um, I'm trying to see if I'm going to have one next Tuesday or not. But definitely, I will see you guys next Friday. Excellent. All right. And then in between this, you know, um, if you have questions, of course, email and call me or text me. Will right. do. Perfect. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. You guys have a good night. You too. All right. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.